Long ago, the Arakations ruled the galaxy. Horror and zombie takeout lay in their wake. What's up? Welcome to Zombie Takeout, the B-Movie and Cult Movie Podcast. I'm John. And I am Scotto. And without any further, well, actually, with a lot of further ado. Um, <laughs> You're for, ready to just skip right into this. Yeah. Um, first off, I just want to mention, my commitment to Sparkle Motion was severely tested tonight. Um, for anybody who's new, uh, I'm a big, big fan of a Japanese band called Bandmade. All female um, melodic hard rock band. Their gimmick is that they wear made. Most of the band wear made costumes. Great band. Um, they put out they don't a all dress as maids anymore. They 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 don't all stick with the gimmick well, anymore. No, Misa, the bass player, gave, just noped out of the maid costume like after the first album. Oh. yeah, she's worn a black dress ever since the second album. Um, right. So, but the rest of them still do. Um, anyway, they put out a a concert video this week. Concert DVD Blu-ray. My copy shipped from Tokyo on Monday somehow got here to Jersey yesterday. We're recording on Wednesday night. Somehow got from Tokyo to Jersey in a day. I don't know why, how, but it's in quarantine till Friday. Tonight, uh. as a part of um, some YouTube thing, they're, they're some music week or something, they streamed at least an hour of it on their YouTube channel. About an hour before we were due to record. Ah, so you'll have to wait. I I watched the first few songs, and then it was the hardest thing I ever had to do to close that that tab and get ready to record. I mean, honestly, if you got like a, a Clorox wipe or something, well, really, not even. You just open the box. No, nah, I, uh... I want to wait. I can't take any chances. It's. <laughs> I mean, I don't see how it got here in a day from Tokyo. It's probably. I think the tracking was a little off. But I'll wait till Friday. I just fortunately the fourth song was the one song on the new album I I don't really listen to, which is a bit too poppy for my taste. So that made it a little easier to stop it. But they're really great live. Anyway, um, moving on, uh, we've got some listeners submitted a uh, couple of tweets from Bodo. First, he said, "Question for y'all: More ridiculous? 86 is FX special effects artist expert brings down the plot." Or 81's Blowout, where special sound effects expert brings down the plot. Now, we were having a brief discussion of this before we started recording. Um, you were saying that Blowout sounds better. I, mm, well, you know, I saw Blowout, I was way too young to understand mm. it and haven't seen it since. I mean, we're talking at least 30, more than right. 35 years from since I've seen it. Right. Uh, the cast, though... Aside from Dennehy, of course, in FX, mm -hmm. the cast for Blowout looks a bit stronger, uh -huh. considering how weak the supporting cast of FX was. Right. I haven't seen uh, Blowout. I've obviously seen FX last week. Um, Bodo's question wasn't which movie is better. Mm. I, I'm fully willing to accept that Blowout is the better movie. Um, but... As I recall, Blowout stars John Travolta, which inherently makes it, to me, the more ridiculous of the two. He, uh, let me do my Vinnie Bomberito yeah. sound effects uh, thing. <laughs> so that in and of itself, to me, would say would suggest that it is the more ridiculous of the two. Well, I guess the premise of a sound effects guy taking down a mobster is more ridiculous than a visual effects guy. Yeah, taking from what down. I read, he he was out recording samples for things, and and he ended up recording like a mob hit or some other like major crime was put into witness relocation, and they went after him. And I, honestly, I the only ridiculous part from, of like, FX, hmm? the only ridiculous part of FX, wasn't that he was a visual effects guy taking right. them down. It was that the visual effects guy was somehow a stunt driver or a makeup yeah. artist. <laughs> like he he could do everything mm -hmm. except understand when he was completely had. Right. <laughs> anyway, on to some news. Oh no, I'm sorry. But I had a tweet about this week's movie as well. Um, he said, Heavy Metal 2000. Was it made for TV? Fade to black, next scene. I was expecting to see the X-Men or the Avengers from the 90s. Boring music, boring story. Gotta love the bad guy had a space armada, then attacks with catapults and arrows. 
Then the predictable twist. It's it's a heavy metal movie. You don't watch it for the plot. <laughs> I hope the soundtrack was actually one of the uh, stronger points of the movie, actually. It was fun. I mean, I preferred the soundtrack of the original, personally. That's an age thing, but... Anyway, on to some news in reference to this movie. Thanks to John Phillips for posting this on our Facebook page. <laughs> this was going to be a tribute episode, but then John t- made us aware of this. Um, Julie Strain, statuesque star of B-movies, is not dead, Film Company now says, from The Hollywood Reporter. This was originally posted on January 13th t- this year. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to it uh, sooner. Uh, Malibu Bay Films, which reported the death of actress Julie Strain, is now saying the B-movie movie queen is still alive. The informa- quote, the information we received from a trusted source of the community on the status of Julie Strain was found to be false, unquote. The film company then posted on Instagram, quote, we deeply apologize for needlessly upsetting anyone as well as ourselves. We've asked THR for a retraction as well. Thank you and God bless Julie and her family. Um, Malibu Films, for whom Strain uh, 57 appeared in several B movies, earlier wrote on Facebook and Instagram that the actress had died on Sunday. On Sunday, this was back in January, um, but those posts have been deleted. Arlene Sedaris, who owns Malibu Films, uh, her late husband founded the company, um, said that she had not just she had just spoken with Julie's partner Dave, who had confirmed that she's not dead. An assistant to Sedaris wrote an email. Um, she said, and I quote, I feel happy. Um, she's pining for the fjords, as you said. Um, <laughs> she's got lovely plumage. Um, strange condition is not known. Um, so, yeah, this was going to be a tribute episode, but now um, kicking off a animated sci-fi two-parter. It is from 2000, Heavy Metal 2000. Of if course, only that brings- we had an Eve the Gota movie to do. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that brings us to the impromptu plot summary. Spencer Bryce, Evil Green Crystals. The Lochnar, by any no, any other name, or no name at all, is still just a MacGuffin. And also brought to you by sequels, keeping us abreast of a plot that never existed. Mm. All right. Uh, so we have um, absolutely nothing to do with the original movie except for that goddamn crystal. Or yeah, fucking no, crystal. They, sorry, sorry. Cost, possibly tie it into the Lochnar. It's never named, but I, I, yeah, I think someone said somewhere it was a shard of the Loch Nar, mm. and uh, the Loch yeah. Nar was never mentioned in the movie. I, I was keeping an eye or ear out for that. Okay, I thought I heard there. So, but uh, so it uh, the the first act was um was quite boring actually. <laughs> so from what I gather. This uh, this person somehow stumbles across this, and it possesses him. A miner, he's he's you know, mining on an asteroid, and he digs into it, and uh, he he takes over a ship and goes on a spree to uh, to get more of it, <laughs> to get this juice. It, it, that... it, he he found out that there is this substance, um, hydrogen. Oh. It is like H two O plus something that will make him immortal. Basically, you know, the, the the fountain of youth. Right. So he he goes to this planet to get some of that because and... some of the that that H two O whatever seeped into the planet and is in the blood of the people who evolved onto that planet. So he takes some to farm. He destroys the planet pretty much, except. Well, he left someone alive. Mm. Well, he t- he took a hostage, and then left her sister alive. Which, of course, classic movie mistake. You mm. don't leave the surviving relative. Well, uh, the movie would have been over if he had. True. Roll the credits. Um, or onto two other stories, as they did in the original. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Either one. But um, so, of course, she goes on a uh, plot for revenge and um she finds a uh, pilot that of course was left behind from this mission as well and they get a ship together and fly off to chase after him and uh they wind up in uh, Mos Eisley Cantina <laughs> or no 
Um, so, some DS. Oh, that's right. It was Neo Calcutta. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was, no, this was more of a Blade Runner thing. Uh, most Eisley was in the first movie. Oh, you're right. You're right. And um, so uh, the, finally, uh, they they get into this uh, big gunfight in the middle of the bar, pretty much mowing down the majority of the people in attendance of this bar. But of course, he has this. Um, he has some power that keeps him going, even when he gets shot up. Uh, luckily, he had enough presence to take a drink of the liquid to heal himself. And uh, they, they, of course, continue the gunfight. Uh, I forget why they couldn't have it out there to the excuse they had that where they had to keep going mm-hmm. and split up. Uh, but of course, she chases him even through like a hyperspace uh, where they have this uh, probably one of the most boring battle space battles in cinematic history because <laughs> it's kind of in slow motion. Mm. And uh, they chase him to the final act, which is the um, – because this was like instead of three stories, they just did kind of three acts. Yeah. It's, well, it's uh, one story as it opposed is, to vignettes is, like the first It one. is one story in three acts, you know, the invasion of the planet, the, you know, the chase – and then finally, the um, the planet of stone or whatever you want to call that planet. Um, some call it hell. Some call it home. Anyway. Uh, some point, Billy Idol shows up as his alien Obi-Wan. Yes, Billy Idol shows up as alien Obi-Wan Kenobi. And um, he takes the um, he takes the sister under his tutelage. Uh, although he... Um, he winds up interfering in the whole fight. She almost has him finished off. And uh, they they chase each other around the planet a little bit. They finally get to the big final con- you know, confrontation uh, where, you know, hilarity ensues. And this is a heavy metal movie. It's not about the plot. It's not about the performances. It's about the ridiculous cheesy excess. It's kind of weird, though, if you compare the two, because when I, the whole time I was watching, I was like, wait a minute, am I remembering the right movie with the original? Because I didn't, I didn't watch the original before mm-hmm. this. Well, I mean, we watched it 11 years ago. We right. reviewed it, mm-hmm. by the way. And we begin that episode with, And I don't God, know if I've seen it since. My God, can you believe it? We've made it to episode 10. Can't I, be 11 I, years, because we just hit 10 years in the well, last May. It says July of oh nine. Okay. <laughs> we, okay. Wait. I thought we. No. It was. It was a long. Okay. It was twenty nineteen. So yeah. We're, it's not. It's it's a. It's ten years and change, dude. Not eleven years. What's July? Okay. It's close. July to of oh nine. Okay. A couple months away from that being eleven years ago, yeah. man. Wow. Actually, no. no. Shit. We're hitting eleven years next month. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of days from now, we hit 11 months. Right. Okay. So, so we were marveling that we made it to episode 10. And I think it was the first time we'd consistently produced episodes well, uh, for yeah. a long time. Yeah. Because <laughs> anyway, when you moved to Chicago, we had some issues with that with the, the TAS. Figuring out what we were going to do next. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so. <laughs> anyway. But the, the movie, the tones were so different. And I, it's one thing I remember. Remember, the original had like John Candy and Eugene Levy, and there was a lot of humor in it. Mm. Like, I, I one thing I, I took from the episode that I completely forgot was that the comedy show drawn together with that animated reality show, they took Captain Hero from that original movie. Well, you know, yeah, I, yeah, Stern looks a lot like Captain Hero. They basically they based the model on it. But Stern was essentially based on Superman. Well, sure, sure. But but the whole point was, you know, they were taking this the Superman who's kind of weird and mm-hmm. flaked out. Right. But but there was a lot of humor in it, whereas this was they were trying to do a straight up action movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with titties, of course. Mm-hmm. Of course. Because it's heavy metal. I first saw this probably not long after it was released, early thousands, very early thousands. Um, hated it. And I don't know why. I think I maybe was taking the original a little too seriously and wanted someone kind of, <laughs> you know, quality replacement, from, you know. Um, 
had a fucking blast with it this time. Although that first act is a bit slow. In the beginning, yeah. I was still wait. I was waiting for the Corvette to show up. Um, I I do like that they did connect them at least kind of you know subtly with the whole idea of the Loch Ness, the Green Crystal. Um, animation was nicely done. Backgrounds were really detailed, and the cell shaded characters were a nice contrast with that. But there were some weird parts of it, like uh, Tyler. Is he like the woodsman in Beauty and the Beast? Okay. <laughs> I, I don't get the reference. I mean, his animation, his his character's appearance. Uh, I think. Well, he, he once he is infected by the Lochnar, and I'm just going to call it the Lochnar. Once he's yeah. infected by it, he becomes feral. Right. Which but, also uh, happened in the first movie, in the Tarnas section, when the one guy, you know, they that tribe who finds it at the end, in the last vignette, they, he be, they become kind of animalistic looking. Uh, no, I'm not talking about the animal in Beauty and the Beast. I'm not talking about the beast. I'm talking about the bad guy. Um, let me Google it. Gaston. <laughs> okay. Well, he, well, because of this build? Uh, just Google image Google image Gaston for Beauty and the Beast. Well, I'm recording. G-A-S-T-O-N. I don't want to open a browser. <laughs> and tell me that that's not Tyler. Oh, yeah. He's top heavy from what I recall of the pictures I've seen. I mean, uh, like the black hair, the black yeah, eyebrows, yeah, yeah, yeah. the chin, the, right. the, the face. I mean, they, they pretty much took that animation. Yeah. He looks a lot put, like, like him, yeah. The weird body armor on him. <laughs> But it was nice to see Ironside, Michael Ironside, who played Tyler, in a role where he wasn't shouting all the time. That's true. He had a very Tim Allen uh, vibe with his voice, I yeah. thought. He was a very calm performance, which is unusual for Michael Ironside. Yeah. I did like the how the interior of the mining ship that he steals was kind of run down. Because it's sci-fi. You know, it's, it's easy to make it all clean and, you know, futuristic looking. I think we were definitely at the point where, where it was... Familiar to see something run down sci-fi. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, Lucas started that more than anything oh, else. Oh, yeah, of course. But it was seriously grungy, which was nice. In fact, is the, this even around the time of Firefly? A little bit before. Firefly was 2002. 2002. I was a bit surprised that the first nude scene wasn't Julie Strain's character. It was her sister. <laughs> well, yeah, that was weird how they did that. The two of them... Like, she's getting out of the ship, and mm-hmm. then you see the shower, and you're like, wait a minute, why is the hair different here yeah. to the... Yeah, then? Mm-hmm. Oh. And they did a great job of communicating Julie's height, which I, I was reading Julie Strain herself, like, oversaw that, because she's six foot one. And, you know, she wanted to make sure her character looked nice and tall. They did a nice job of communicating that. Um, the planet that they lived on, Eden, definitely reminded me of Star Wars. Yeah. Because it's this desert planet. Right, there was a definite uh, Tatooine feel to it. Mm. Nice gore animation. You see some people get shot like straight through the head at times. You know, body parts getting cut off. Um, also liked the uh, dog fight over Eden. That was that was a nice ship fight. Um, also, the ship with the buzz saw in the front of it, I loved. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't actually a buzzsaw. I think it was the engine. But it looked like this big laser buzzsaw in the front of the ship. I will say, Julie Strain's performance wasn't good, but it fit the movie. Oh, yeah. There, there wasn't much she could do with this, honestly. Yeah. And I loved all the alien designs. There's a billion aliens in this movie. They all look different and ridiculous. It is Some of them were cool. My favorite probably was the uh, the Stone Man yeah, oh, I loved Zeke. Um, Odin, Idol's character's sidekick. Um, this little guy who's made of stone, who is just this adorable sidekick. I, I loved him for the entire movie. I'm glad. Well, he kind of, he survived. Um, Honestly, I didn't see, uh, Bodo saying the twist was predictable. You didn't see it coming? I, I don't think I really saw that coming. I think, it, I mean, it, it made sense. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I didn't see it coming. And this is, I mean, the first time I saw, I've seen the movie before. It was a long time ago, so I forgot most of the plot. Um, I forgot there was a twist. Um, it didn't shock me when it happened, but I didn't predict no. it. 
But like, this is not a movie where I'm sitting there trying to predict what's going to happen. Exactly. That that is probably what it was. I wasn't really thinking there was going to be a twist. So to have a twist, it was kind of like, oh, all right. Mm-hmm. But then they really didn't do much with the twist at no. the end. There wasn't a very big confrontation. It was just like a, oh yeah, then then we lock him in. They just gave <laughs> Zeke a chance to be the hero. And... But I mean, you know, my my reactions to this were a great great example of expectation management. I went into it the first time with the wrong expectations. You know, I expected it to be legit good. It was not. This time, I knew going in, it's gonna be ridiculous and cheesy and gory and full of nudity, and I was just in for a movie like that, and I had a great time. I wasn't expecting to like the soundtrack actually i was expecting to be like oh you know like what hacks did they uh <laughs> you know throw in together but i mean you know they had pantera they had system of a down they it was uh, a, a fitting of, heavy metal soundtrack a lot of bob ezra you know <laughs> bob ezra uh produced stuff right. in there it, Voivod, you know, yeah, I mean, it was really fine. It, I didn't really notice it a lot i was uh, i was relieved when it when the heavy metal came in because it starts orchestral. You know, when right. we finally get the first loud yeah. song, I was relieved. I mean, I'm looking at the soundtrack of the original. Not very metal. <laughs> no, I'm but seeing, it was, you know, fitting for the time. And, and it was, I'm seeing Stevie Nicks. Yeah, I'm seeing right. Journey. Right. I'm seeing Blue Easter Cult. And well, Blue Easter Cult is considered metal. Really? Yeah, they're considered metal. Ah, uh, hmm. And the Stevie Nicks and who did you say before them? Journey. Those songs were for like love scenes and whatnot. <laughs> uh, this is the closest they. Well, they they did have Sabbath in there. Yeah, so Sabbath. That... They had trust. They you know there was some metal, some proper metal. Um, back to the, the sequel. Um, there was one cheesy moment that I kind of had to like roll my eyes in not a fun way. Um, when the first time she catches up with Tyler. It's on this kind of rundown city planet, very, um, very underworld Blade Runner kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, you and know. She finds him in this bar. Right. The holographic band had a different relevance today. Like if we could have that today. <laughs> um. So you know, she throws off this cloak she's wearing. You see these, you know, bandoliers, and she pulls out this Gatling gun. And it's all in slow motion. It was very Rodriguez. But slow motion just isn't cool to me anymore. No. No. And especially in a cartoon. I mean, yeah. you don't have to make it slow motion. You can actually... But that was... You can just add frames a, like uh, Colin did, yeah. That was a very late oh. 90s, early 2000s thing. Yeah, true. You know, when... Think about it. This is around when Coming John, off of John Woo, Woo yeah. was big. And I was like, can we... Can he turn the slow motion off of the yeah, camera? It was coming off of John Woo and, and Rodriguez early stuff and Yeah. Yeah, slow motion was a thing. Honestly, the the fight in the bar is probably my favorite scene in the whole movie though. Mm-hmm. I was I it was kind of like, oh, you know, it finally grabbed me in. But of course, it's like oh, more than a half hour into it though. So by yeah. that point it was kind of like mm-hmm. <laughs> Now you were complaining about the um the the jump scene. Now it was too slow and boring. Yeah. I did think piggybacking off of Tyler's ship with the tractor beam was kind of clever. At that point, they're just sending ships after her because they know she's piggybacking. And they're just getting destroyed by the wake of the, the hyperspace or whatever it's called. The jump, you know, the hyperspace. So it wasn't really a fight scene. Yeah, it was just this, they're kind of flying at him and then, oh, no. they It was just... Uh. <laughs> it was just okay we're gonna destroy another one and another one yeah um i gotta say idol's performance was a very pleasant surprise he's actually a decent voice actor i always think of uh his performance in the wedding singer but uh okay i haven't seen the wedding singer. <laughs> Never seen very, the wedding singer so. it's a very brief caveat at the uh-huh. end uh, he's like a first class passenger on the flight they're off. It's okay. just like a couple minutes, you mm-hmm. know, in the film. But but he was good as, you know, the the sort of wise old man. Yeah. Well, he's got a great voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean not just not just for singing, but yeah. I mean I, I am surprised actually has he done more voice over overwork? Because I mean I have to check because I, I wouldn't be surprised if he had, but you know, I, if he hasn't, I hope he does more. 
Ah, uh, yeah, he's got a hundred and oh, soundtrack credits. Never mind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's been a pretty I popular guess, musician for like forty. I guess 40 they years. would use him for a hundred and thirty-nine. They, but um, uh, twenty-three acting credits. Oh shit! Okay, so he's done a fair amount of acting. Mostly um, video shorts, though. Uh-huh. <laughs> and Heavy Metal Two Thousand was the first thing he did after the Wedding Singer, which was ninety-eight. Okay. Um, I do like how they amped up the creepy River Guardian trope. Because they have to st- cross this river of lava, right? And they're on it. They got a boat, and you know this aliens, this like m- mucus covered green alien sitting there saying, "Like I'm the guardian of the river. You have to give me something to cross." And it says she has to give him a kiss. She just kisses him, and they say, "What are you doing? We're ready to go." But they get a kick out of that. <laughs> yeah, it was a little like okay, but that, it was good. I mean. I think it was one of the few attempts at humor in the movie, actually. Yeah, it's yeah. only like the second really joke right. that yeah, they This is not a funny pull. movie. Right. Well, it's not an intentionally funny movie. Uh, you know, unintentionally, it's it's hilarious. Yeah. Um, I do like that they had Julie do the turn to swim and pull out the sword and all of that. There was a big <laughs> nod to the original there. I was going to say, is that the original outfit from the first one, too? It's, it's not exactly, but it's very similar. I, I compared yeah. them. Um, I, I do like her armor, in quotes. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> going into combat naked is not a new thing. You know, there are tribes in, you know, long, long ago who did it. The, the Celts, for example. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, wearing basically a G... It, it's basically one of those body, you know... Um, Swimsuits that have like the, all that are like all straps, <laughs> right? It's one of those deals. Not really effective in combat, except she's got a pauldron on one shoulder and like a bracer with some blades in it, and a big, a big ass sword. That's that's what she's wearing. Um, it's a heavy metal movie, um, and I loved how the swords in that battle just cut through bodies like they're jello. I wonder how much uh, silicone adds to your armor class. <laughs> Does the swords just? cut through bodies like they were cutting through jello that was hilarious like they had no bones <laughs> the cg when odin actually showed his true form was hilariously bad like i i was a fan of all of the animation in this movie until that moment uh so is he like salacious a, a big salacious crumb i don't exactly know he's some sort of raptor thing like it was so brief I mean, they are. He's one of the, the species mentioned at the beginning, the Arakations. Yes. And I'm guessing they borrowed that name from Arakokra from D and D, the Bird People. Hmm. I was um, thinking of Dune and uh, the Arakis. Arrakis. Okay. I think yeah. that's what it was. Yeah. Okay, Arakines, Arrakis. Arrakis is the planet. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, I was thinking because I watched a ton of D and D. I was thinking Arak um, Arakokra. Um, so the fact that he was kind of raptorish wasn't a surprise. Um, it, but I, it reminded me a lot of FX, where like the actual plot came in like the last two yeah. minutes of the movie. I was um, like, wait, what? <laughs> with regard to Odin's true form, if you've seen that that old um, Adult Swim show about the angel, kind of like that, but creepy. Um. And I, I love he was the, the, one of the sidekicks of Space Ghost. Yeah, um, Zork a little bit, yeah, Zork. Um, oh man, I miss that show. I love that Zeke sacrificed himself to save the galaxy because Zeke was the best character in the movie. The little stone guy. Yeah, by far the best character too. in the movie. A bit of trivia, it's based on a graphic novel called The Melting Pot, written by Kevin Eastman, Simon Bisley, and Eric Talbot. Kevin Eastman was married to Julie Strain for like 10 years. Maybe 15. Okay, that that would explain why she had the Eastman name Mm -hmm. in the credits. Yeah, they split up in 2006, so they were still married when the movie was made. Um, On to sequels and remakes. On to sequels and remakes. The film had a video game uh, about the events after Heavy Metal 2000 called Heavy Metal Fact 2, in which the player assumes the role of Julie as she fights to save Aiden from an evil entity called Gith. I'm thinking they also once again ripped off D&D. Um, <laughs> the Gith in D&D showed up in 81. So. 
The game is set sometime after the film and features cameo appearances of several characters, for example, Julie's sister Carrie, the pilot Jermaine, who she hooks up with after the movie, and a resurrected Tyler. Yeah, spoilers. Um, I actually had the game. It was one of the first PC games that I bought. Really? Uh, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's a 2000 video game. So it's in that weird time when everything was kind of realistic, but also really blocky. But it's, it was fun. I've, I've been meaning to watch her playthrough on YouTube um, because I, obviously I can't get it again. Yeah. Um, after the release of 2000, a third film has been in various stages of development since 2008 and into 2009. Reports circulated that David Fincher and James Cameron would executive produce and each direct one of the eight to nine segments in a new film based on heavy metal. Wow. Eastman would also direct a segment, as well as animator Tim Miller with Zack Snyder, Gore Verbinski, and Guillermo del Toro attached to direct segments. However, mm-hmm. Paramount Films decided to stop funding on the film after by, by August of 2009, and no distributor or production company has shown interest in any second sequel since. I'm not a Zack Snyder fan, but I would like to see him do a segment in a heavy metal movie. I think so- it's a perfect match. If they were to do a, another a heavy metal movie, though, another one. Well, wait, wait. Should, okay. In, two, in 2011, filmmaker Robert Rodriguez, who I referenced earlier, announced at Comic-Con that he had pur- purchased the rights to heavy metal and planned to develop a new animated film at his new Quick Draw Studios. However, in on March 11th, 2014, with the formation of his very own television network, El Rey, Rodriguez considered switching gears and bringing it to TV. It's hmm. a heavy metal TV movie. I'm not sure. That I mean, doesn't it d- work. Because everything <sighs> that makes heavy metal great, you can't do on TV. <laughs> you can't do that on television. Exactly. It's just... it's it, it would be everything bad about heavy metal, but none of the fun parts. I mean, it is a little strange, you know, thinking that they did this in 2000, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just, it just seems kind of like something in a time that's passed at this point. Yeah. And it's really weird that the two don't really match up all that well, the sequel, and the original, like it, not even, you know, the fact that it's vignettes, you know, the yeah, fact that the they is really the through line and, you know, they, they paid tribute to the original with the swimming and scene and, you know, the whole turn of thing. I think I remember for the original, I didn't get to the end of the episode, but I think I remember not liking that they did three different stories and not doing one. Mm-hmm. And now, <laughs> now they've done mm-hmm. one story and I'm not sure if that works either. <laughs> but if they were to do a TV series, would it be different vignettes, you know, that they would come back to here and there? I mean, that could be interesting. And I'm bashing the idea of TV because I'm thinking network TV. Yeah, this would be a cable thing. Probably. If he puts it on like HBO or, or something else that I Netflix, something else I have access to that I pay for. You know, HBO did like a, an adult co- yeah, cartoon. Yeah. Um, Not, it's I a good fit for HBO. I mean, I don't have HBO, which makes me sad for this. It was if something it goes with there. animals. I can't remember what it was called exactly. It was on after, Wait, like... No, it's not going to HBO because Rodriguez has his own television network, not studio. Oh. All right. I don't know anything about All right. Um, me neither. So, I mean, if he can do whatever he wants on that ch- in that network, you know, not stick to, you know, FCC guidelines, then I'm totally down for a TV show because... And wait, it begins with an A. What's the fucking word? Um, anthology. Oh. An anthology approach would be great. But of course, I mean, he's sticking with animation. I'm wondering if the next step for heavy metal would be to be a live action. The budget would be ridiculous. <laughs> and you can get away with the gore and the sex in animation a lot easier than you can get away with it in live action. You'd have a lot more complaints if you did all that shit in live action. And the effects budget would be ridiculous. And yeah. it's rooted in a comic book. True. You know, I've, you know, in, in the slew of been, comic book movies that we... I was going to say. Hmm? <laughs> I was going to say, comic book movies, man. Fair. But uh, you're right from a commercial standpoint. Possibly. Um, but from a personal standpoint, with this, you know, 
onslaught of comic book movies we'd had we've had over the last decade plus, I've realized that superheroes, and I think this applies to heavy metal as well, work far better in animation. Hmm. It just doesn't work in live action as well. Yeah, but, I think you're right though that this this kind of gets a pass because it's got a, it's animated. Mm-hmm. I think people would lose their shit if they did this. Definitely. <laughs> Real action, I mean, so. and that's why you know Julie Strain's performance kind of works because it's animated. Yeah, I mean, there's some great voice acting out there. I have a lot of respect for voice actors. There are some, there are some voice acting performances and animation that are every bit as good as live action. But you can get away with less in animation. You can get away with a flat performance, and it'll still work if the visuals are good. On the brains. On the brains. I had a fucking blast with it because I was looking for exactly what I got. I'm going four and a half. Wow. So the original, uh, you gave four uh-huh. and, uh, I gave two uh-huh. and you've given this one four, four and, and a half. half. I'm giving this one two and a half. Okay. Well, we're consistent. <laughs> we both like this better than the original. Slightly more than the original. Yeah. I mean, it, it's solid soundtrack. It, uh, there's some, good scenes in it um they at least attempted a int- single plot mm-hmm. so yeah it is a it is a better movie i i mean i think if they had maybe stuck with the tone at least you know got some comedic actors in here and and did some shtick mm-hmm. i think it might have been a little better but i guess this point of like a genocidal maniac I went in for ridiculous cheese and gore. I got ridiculous and nudity. I got ridiculous cheese, gore, and nudity. I was happy. At least so, bring Eugene Levy back. Yeah, he would have been imp- an improvement. Um, yeah. Actually, he should have been fucking Zeke. Yeah. Should have been playing Zeke, just to clarify what I mean there. Um, <laughs> but if, so what if we learn? Uh, we learned that if you're going to have a catchphrase, like if you try to kill someone, you should make sure they're dead. You should practice it yourself. And I learned that a space vampire is still a vampire. Tyler was basically a vampire. And that was the most aggressive I've ever heard someone say the name Tyler, wasn't it? Probably. <laughs> it's right. like a George Carlin bit of like Connor and Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you a chuckle. Tyler! <laughs> All right, so until next time, we'll be continuing this. Uh, this is a sci fi animation two parter with Titan AE. I remember loving that one back in the day. I think my I think my opinion is going to be the opposite of Heavy Metal 2000, where oh. I hated it originally. Now I love it. I think I'm going to go the other way with Titan AE. I loved it back in the day, but we'll see. Until then, of course, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life. There you are. There you are.